This episode is all about sailing. We're heading north. Our eventual destination is the coast of France. But for now, we wanted to make it up to the northeastern tip of Sardinia and the Madalena Archipelago. And along the way, we experience it all. Epic sailing, fully saturated sunsets, impressive scenery, stormy weather, marine friends, haircuts with a pocket knife, and finally, our destination, the beautiful island of Madalena. So I've been looking at the weather, trying to decide how to proceed. Weather is getting a little bit harsher. There is mistral blowing almost every second day. So we have um, smaller windows in between and we have to actually be a little more cautious about that. So there is one of those situations coming upon us. Um, and as much as I would love to stay here and explore the beautiful area that I was so much looking forward to, I think that we'll have to proceed, um, get up north to seek shelter from uh, some heavy winds that are coming on Monday. And today it is for Saturday. So we got today and tomorrow. We'll see what we make. We headed out of our anchorage and pulled up the sails. At first it was all easy going, but soon we were greeted with some intense gusts that came flying down the high Sardinian cliffs. With heavily reefed sails and a hand always on the main sheet, we bashed along, magic carpet performing stoically. So Aladino's turn to steer for a bit. I was getting soaked back there on the tiller, uh, so he got his wet weather gear on, which is a good idea. I've got mine on standby for when it's my turn to steer again. Um, yeah, the gusts, they come, I think they are coming off the mountain. And when they come, they're very, very, very strong. So usually when they come, we steer up into the wind just a little bit more to take some pressure off. We let the main sheet completely out to the point where the sail's just basically luffing. And, um, and then we just read it out. Here's, here's one. <laughs> you see how the boat's tilting? There goes the main sheet. I'm cozy behind the Dodger, so I don't actually feel any of the wind at the moment, but, but where Aladino is on the tiller, you feel all the wind. As the landscape changed, so did the gusts, and soon we found ourselves in a place of relative calm. Fish! 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 So we just stopped, let the main sheet out, rolled in the jib. We were also motoring a bit because there's not very much wind at the moment. So we stopped the motor, the engine. How does it feel? Um, it seemed powerful before, but I think it was because we were moving. But not the biggest. Should be all right. Perfect. I hope it's not a cormoran. That's the only uh, thing I've seen around. Oh no, there it is. Yeah, it looks like a flashy fish. It's always exciting to have a fish on the line, but it was a pretty small little guy, so we let him go and we carried on our way. Good job, Amore. People always ask how Aladino and I are able to maintain a good relationship when we're sharing such a small space 24-7. Besides just being a very good fit for each other, I also think we're very good at spending time alone, even when we're together. Before we met, we both led very independent lives, and we both enjoy our own company. Often we'll listen to music or podcasts, content to be in our own heads, and enjoy some alone time even when we're only sitting a few feet apart. And when the time comes to take off the headphones and be together again, we're recharged and have lots of exciting new thoughts and ideas to talk about. We're almost arriving at our new destination. We've decided not to continue overnight. Um, we'll, have a, we'll have some sleep, but probably to continue tomorrow morning. Also, I have to add that we decided to pass the bay and not stop at one of the nice anchorages. But if you ever are in the area, it still is one of my absolute favorites. Uh, we just had to cross it out this time, but it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, so it has been so gusty today. It's been really crazy. Uh, we've had a lot of sail changes. At some points we had the engine on because there was no wind. And then it would just come and slam you down and shorten sail and then, uh, and then it would die again. So it's been quite a day, but um, the last few hours or so have been fairly consistent. It seems like whenever we get closer to land, the gusts increase. Um, 
But when we were sort of out in the middle of the bay, yeah, it was a bit more consistent. So we're just gonna tuck in there and drop the anchor. Looks like a beach with some camping on it. Are you excited to be at anchor? We've been sailing a lot yeah. today. Yeah. How many nautical miles have we gone? Like 30. Oh, really? Huge progress in the beginning. Yeah, true, I guess. It feels like I we've mean, done a lot more. 30 is still a full day, more or less. Yeah. Uh, averaging five is good. Still six hours. line to when we actually entering the bay is exactly against the wind so then it's logical to take the main down then for me. All right we just turned on the engine and Dini's going to take down the main. I steered and let down the main halyard as Aladino neatly folded and secured the sail onto the boom. And just like that we were home for the night. It was perfect timing. The anchor went down just as the sun did too. The next morning we left bright and early and continued going north. This time we had a clear destination in mind. There were extremely strong winds predicted from the northeast and we had to be somewhere protected. We set our sights on the Golfo Aranchi because it looked like it would provide excellent protection from the incoming weather. There wasn't much wind, so we had the engine on, determined to make it to our destination. And good thing we did. It started with the rain, but over the next few days, our anchor was tested as we were buffeted by winds. Fortunately, we had chosen an excellent anchorage and we were well protected. So I've been editing and Aladino went out to get groceries and he just sent me a text message that he's coming back in the dinghy and he attached a photo. <laughs> Look how he's coming back. So it's really strong wind right now. That's him and he's got his feet up. He's just taken a snooze and the wind is blowing him straight towards us. <laughs> this is so funny. He better start rowing soon though because I think he's going to end up more over there if he doesn't. What a character. I actually, I think he's steering with the oar using it as like a rudder, but with his feet. <laughs> Only Elodie. There we go, home stretch under human power. Hi Amore! Hi. Yeah, it's always such an adventure going for groceries, but this was really nice. Yay, veggies and fruits again! What have we got here? Radicchio, nice. Fennel. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy to have fresh things again. Look at our fresh there's supplies. I know, there's so much, but look at our fresh supplies. This is where we keep fruits and veggies. It's literally completely empty. I don't think it's been this empty all summer. And you know what? A little um, lunch snack. I got Sardinian ravioli, so let's uh, heat up some water and have some. Oh, fun, okay. Sounds good. Uh, rig ricotta stuffed Sardinian ravioli, wow. which uh, yeah, are typical from here. Cool. Since ravioli are something with a refined interior, I like to serve them with just olive oil and maybe sprinkle some herbs on them. After a few days, the weather died down and the sun returned. Time to continue! It almost felt like winter the last two days, but we just snug into this bay and uh, we waited for the winds to pass. We were quite cozy in the boat and it turned out to be a perfect anchorage. Actually, uh, yeah, I've never slept so good with that much wind. Uh, it was just perfectly protected and there were no waves at all. But now it's time to continue. Every day that we can, we continue further north. I'm interested. The wind stopped blowing 
what around like one or two in the morning something like that yeah even later even a bit later so now it's about 10 in the morning so it's, it hasn't been that long since things just calmed down and I'm interested to see once we go around that point there might still be some really intense waves we're gonna have to see what it's like so yeah there won't be wind but there might still be intense waves just from being stirred up from all this wind over the past few days. We pulled up the sails and ghosted out of the Golfo Aranchi, past the huge Sardinian ferries and rock formations. But when we encountered some friends along the way, we took the sails back down to enjoy their company. Oh look, all oh, their friends. Hi, beautiful. Hi. Slow down! Hi, gorgeous! Oh my goodness! So cool, I've never seen them this close to land. Wow, so cool! That was such an unexpected surprise. I did not think we would see dolphins in this narrow little channel, but that was really cool. There's, um, oh, there's one just jumped. Um, there's a mussel farm, I believe, here. Um, I don't know if they're here because of that, but they're all around the boat. They're just everywhere. Eventually, we continued on. Sure enough, when we left the protection of the gulf behind us, the residual swell started jostling the boat around. So, the swell is not huge, but it is really confused because basically, over the past few days, the wind started out in one direction, coming from the northeast, then it switched and started coming from the northwest, or reverse that, first northwest, then northeast. But the result is, is that we have these residual waves coming from both directions, and so it makes for a very agitated, very choppy, very confused sea. So even though the swell is not giant, it's ridiculously uncomfortable and this is the stuff that's going to make me seasick really soon. So I'm just standing here watching the horizon, willing myself to not throw up because the boat is just like, there's no rhythm to it. So the forecast said that during the height of the winds over the past few days, in the unprotected just open areas of the med, the swell was reaching 5 meters, which is give or take 15 feet. Um, which is big, so I'm, I'm glad we were safely at anchor. Save your money if you're planning to go to the fun park. Come sail with us. Wow, what an advertisement. We yeah. should start a charter business with that slogan. Oh, we might one day. <laughs> if we had the sails up, I think it would help stabilize us a bit so we wouldn't be moving as much, but right now, we're going straight into the wind and we're also, as you can see, right next to these big cliffs. Um, so first of all, I think the wind pattern will probably change once we leave these cliffs behind. So we might get to put the wind, the sails up then, but for now we're just motoring. But as the day kept on, the swell kept lessening and we got more used to the motion. So used to it, in fact, that I decided to try cutting my hair. I've never been too picky about my hair. In fact, I've never once had my hair cut at a salon, but this was a first even for me. I tried it first with the kitchen scissors, but that didn't work so well. These scissors are so bad. Oh my god. Super good scissors. Where? You're not allowed to drop them in the water. Okay, where? My Swiss knife. Oh, these are really good scissors. Say something that will make my day Cause these memories of you Done already? No, now I gotta even it out a little bit Underway, rolling around, lots of wind, no mirror, using the scissors from Aladino's pocket knife, but all in all, I think it turned out just fine. Is it even? Yeah, it looks good. On both sides, it's even? Yeah. And when I put my hair up in a ponytail, is there like a single piece that comes down weirdly or something, or is it okay? Looks pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. Perfect. 
Of course, as soon as I had already cut my hair on the bumpy seas, we glided into the protection of the Madalena archipelago, and the seas calmed down considerably. It was such a treat as soon as we got into these protected waters behind all of these islands here. And the sea here is just flat calm like it, it often is. And after just being thrown around, um, every muscle in your body is tense when you're in waves. Like that, especially those really confused waves. Like I said, your body just can't predict which way the boat, boat is going to toss you next, which really adds a whole new element into the motion. So it was like such a feeling of sweet relief to just glide into calm water again. And yeah, it's been, it's been wonderful. Feels good to have arrived in home waters again. Home water. can calm down. I know every nook and cranny here. I know with which wind I have to go where. It does feel really good, doesn't it? Um, yeah, can't help it. But the last five seasons, I've uh, always decided to come uh, here. Northern Sardinia, known as Costa Esmeralda, the Emerald Coast. And I, yeah, it's for a good reason. I love it. And I think it's going to be really cool being here in October. Yeah, I can place already tell. Because this does get very crazy yeah. and very It's the crowdiest, crowdiest the place ever. Yeah, but now it's, it's literally paradise because the landscape, totally. the island is just amazing. Yeah. So the only place that I've never really seen in this area is La Madalena which is an island and actually this whole area is named after it, the Madalena Archipelago. And the reason why I've never seen it is because there's no anchorages, um, so it's just the harbor. And normally when we're here in the middle of summer, the harbor is always completely booked and super expensive. So now we were like, ah, it's a bit off season. Let's see if we can uh, get into the harbor and we called. And the price is by the square meter. And so for our boat, it's only 15 euros a night which is insane we we haven't found that price anywhere in the mediterranean so far the cheapest we've ever found is 25 a night totally yeah. so i'm super excited so we get to see a new little town and um yeah the harbor is totally affordable which is great the price of course changes within the season but still i remember it being a very cheap place also for august standards when it's oh, high really? season uh, but i never got a spot because uh, it's always booked out We neared the gorgeous island community of Madalena just as the sun was turning to gold and making the entire thing even more picturesque for our arrival. Yeah, I suggested um, visiting La Madalena to Maya because I find it uh, one of the prettier places around here. Yeah, I find this so interesting because to me, right now, is paradise. Like, it's warm during the day, but it, you're not sweating. Um, you can still swim, but it's not like you have to swim to stay, to stay sane because it's so hot out. Uh, during the night it's cool, so I sleep really well with a blanket, but it's not like I freeze when I get out of bed. It's literally perfect. Um, but all of the tourist boats aren't here anymore. The harbors are empty and it's like, you walk through some towns and it's like a ghost town, which is so crazy because to me this is like the perfect time. August is just too hot here. It's too hot, it's too crowded, everything is two or three times the price. Um, yeah, if I could avoid August in the Med and just come here for June, um, yeah, up until June and then starting again sort of mid-September, I think that's perfect. Ottimo, grazie. As usually happens in Italian harbors, a dinghy came out to greet us and show us to our berth for the night. And so, there we were, a whole new gorgeous town to explore. But for that, you'll have to wait for the next episode. Thank you so much to all of our patrons, without whom none of you would be watching these episodes. Our patrons really do make it possible for these episodes to be produced every week with the high quality gear that we're now starting to acquire, and uh, we're just so thankful to all of you for that. An extra big thank you to these folks who really go above and beyond to make sure these episodes continue. And of course, a huge thank you to all of you viewers who make these episodes worth making. See you next week.